Welcome to the SAP HANA Academy. My name is Bob and in this series of videos we'll be looking at SAP S4 HANA. In the previous video we looked at instantiating the SAP S4 HANA 1610 edition. And in this video we're going to look at testing connectivity to the various apps. So there's a few different ways you can connect to the apps. If this is my image within the SAP Cloud Appliance Library, here I can select connect. And when you select connect, there's various apps you can access from here if you want. So we're going to actually access everything through a remote desktop, which is here. But if you want, you can access your BI Launchpad here by selecting open, SAP NetWeaver Administration, and also your SAP GUI, all from clicking connect here. If I go back to the Windows desktop, this is the welcome screen of that image. Now, the default browser is Internet Explorer. You might want to install Google Chrome. This is because Chrome is a better browser for looking at OData web services, which is a mainstay for S4 HANA CDS output. So the only thing I'll do on this image is I'll install Google Chrome. It takes around 20 seconds to install. Here you can see that's the only thing I've done to that image. So I'll log in, and again, I'm going to go and get the URL from the welcome page and set it as the home page on Google Chrome like so. And I'll set it to the current page, which is that welcome page. So back on the image, you'll see some other tools such as the SAP Logon, SAP Lumera, Design Studio, and of course, Eclipse, which is what we'll use for the SAP HANA Studio. Additionally, Eclipse also has the ABAP development tools, which you're going to be using during this video series. And again, we're going to test connectivity to those various tools in this video. So to get started with our connectivity tests on the image, double click on that welcome shortcut using Google Chrome, and it will take you to an overview page on the S4 trial image, which includes some information on the S4 Launchpad users. Now, if I scroll down, you'll see that the BPS4 user is the main system and administrator user on the S4 HANA system. And it also has all of the S4 business roles already assigned to it. Now, if you look at the notes on that user, you'll see some warnings about loading times because this BP inst S4 user is the main system and administrator user on the S4 system and it also has all of the S4 business roles assigned to it. So because it has access to all your business roles and so all your various tiles, it can be slow to use as every time you log into your Fiori Launchpad, every available tile is going to load, which in turn loads a lot of web services in the background and this is why you get the warnings for slow load times. So we're not going to use this user when testing our image. We're going to use another user. So copy the S4H underscore MM user instead. And then if you go to that Fiori Launchpad link, you can right click to open it in a new window. You'll get a warning that your connection isn't private. But if you just select that advanced option at the bottom, you can then say proceed to the URL. Additionally, if you look at the landing page, there are some notes on how to make the security certificate trusted by your computer so you won't get this prompt every time you use the Fiori Launchpad. So this is the Fiori Launchpad. All we need to do is log in with our password. So the password here, as it says on the welcoming screen, is welcome1 with a capital W. It'll take a few seconds to log in. And in fact, the first time you use it, it could take between two to five minutes for you to log in. You'll see a lot of tiles, but most of them won't display any data. But these are really for drilling. These are for drill down. So don't worry about that for now. If you scroll down and look for purchasing analytics, you should see some which are returning data from the various S4 O data services. Now, it might take a few seconds to load, so just bear with us. The first time, it can be a bit slow. So if I scroll down, I'm looking for those purchasing analytics. You can see with the three bubbles that it's trying to load some data. So I'll just scroll up, and we'll wait a few seconds while the data sets are loading. You'll see that it says some of the tiles can't load. 
don't worry about this scroll down and if we see some look at these other tiles to do with purchasing spend or the purchasing group activities you should see over time and again the first time it's a bit slow values will start to appear so here you can see some tiles which contain some data but this is good this actually means that the fury launchpad works it's connecting to our s4 system even though there's not a lot of data there we're going to perform another test so what i'll do is i'll minimize and we're going to perform our next tests in eclipse so we're going to double click on eclipse it'll take again a few seconds to load the first time and we're going to use eclipse for two main tasks the first is to do ABAP development within the ABAP development perspective and which you might not have seen before and the other task is to do some administration tasks within the administration console which would be for example switching on servers or creating users so this is the ABAP perspective you can actually minimize that feature explorer we don't really need it now you'll see when you use that S4 image there's a default connection as you can see here if I click on the plus button the first thing that we'll have to do is log in to that connection so you're logging with the password welcome one and then you'll select OK don't worry that it's the BP inst user it takes a few seconds to connect and don't forget that there are more default passwords for other important system users and it's all documented in that getting started guide so if you open up the projects and then look at the local objects underneath, you'll see the name of the connection, BPinst. And then if you actually expand that BPinst connection, you'll see various folders such as business engineering and dictionary. Now that dictionary folder has two and a half thousand objects. We're not really going to go into it here because we've already covered it in our other video series on creating a virtual data model in S4 HANA. If you want to see that other video series, go to our YouTube channel and if you scroll down into the S4 HANA section right at the bottom and you scroll to the right, there's a series called Modeling with S4 HANA CDS Creating a Sample Virtual Data Model. There you've got over 30 videos which give you the basics of the ABAP perspective as well as on building CDSs. Now the next step is to connect to our HANA database and to do that we need to switch out of the ABAP development perspective and go to the SAP HANA administration console. You can click on the link on the top right hand side of the screen. Just click cancel if you're prompted to do any form of password recovery. We don't really need to set that up here. However what we need to do is log on to this SAP HANA database. So the way you do this is with that connection on the top left hand side you right click and you select log on. Now the password here is the password that you created when you instantiated your image. So I'll type in that password and then store that username and password. And then these are of course your typical SAP HANA objects. So if I drill down within catalog, you'll see that you've got your various schemas. It might take a few seconds to connect. The schema that we're really focusing on is this schema which is SAP HANA DB. So if I drill down, you've got the various folders to do with tables, sequences, procedures, and so on and so forth. We're not really going to look into the objects within this SAP HANA DB schema because we already looked at them in our virtual data model video series. The last step in this setup piece in this particular video is to check to see if there are new development tools for ABAP and HANA in the Eclipse IDE. Now this is a process that you should do more often than not in order to get the latest updates and functionality for your development environment. Now you don't actually have to update everything in Eclipse. So to make it so that we don't get updates from too many places, we can change what we actually update. To do this, go to the window menu, select preferences and then choose install forward slash update. There you can select your available software site. So for now, we can deselect everything except for the SAP update site. However, if you want to, you can choose to update everything within Eclipse and do this at another time. So to actually do the update, all I need to do now is select OK, then go to the help menu and you've got the option which is check for updates. And now it's going to check for those updates. It takes a few seconds to connect to that SAP update site 
and then here you can see the available update. So all I need to do is select next. Then here, all I need to do is accept the terms and the license agreements and click on finish. And here you can see that the Eclipse is being updated. It only takes a few seconds to carry out. Once it's finished, you'll need to restart Eclipse. So would you like to restart now? I'm going to select yes. It takes a few seconds to get back in. And then once you're in, you've actually updated your Eclipse. So we've now read the S4 HANA 1610 fully activated appliance, and we've tested the various high level administrative users on our system for both the S4 application layer and for SAP HANA. So this is where we created that connection to our SAP HANA database. We verified that works. Within the ABAP perspective, we logged in as our user with the right password. So we log in with that welcome one user, which is standard. And then you click on OK. Just do a quick test to make sure you can drill down and see your various objects. And of course, lastly, what we did within the Fiori Launchpad, we logged in and we just made sure that we could see some data within our purchasing analytics. All I need to do now is log off so I can click on the little icon here and select sign out and I'll click on OK. So everything looks good on our image. Again, you might want to further look at your landing or welcome page here and you might want to have a look at that getting started guide just to get more information on how the S4 HANA image works. But again, if you're at this point, then it means you've successfully tested that your clients on your Windows remote desktop can connect to your SAP S4 HANA appliance.